There are few characters in South Park who make me laugh more consistently than Ike Broflovsky. Sure, he isn't utilized all that frequently, but for me, the novelty of hearing an actual child deliver South Park dialogue absolutely never gets old. But Ike's role in the show has grown and evolved over the years, going from more of a plot device for Kyle stories and developing into a character who actually has a surprising amount going on beneath the surface. And all the while, he has been hilarious. So join me as we explore the evolution of Ike Broflovsky. Flofsky. Why do you keep harassing me? Why don't you the baby? Amazingly, Ike's first episode where he's front and center is the pilot episode of the entire show. Cartman gets an anal probe. In fact, he's the very first character outside of the main four boys to make an appearance in all of South Park. Pretty amazing. It also immediately introduces one of the most iconic classic South Park bits. Ready, Ike? Kick the baby! Why don't you the baby? Kick the baby! <laughs> But this is a perfect example of how Ike was used for years as a means to motivate Kyle in South Park stories as he's abducted by aliens, or taken by visitors as they call him. Kyle has this big end of the episode speech where he pleads the visitors to give Ike back before Ike eventually just jumps from the spaceship. Boy, am I glad to see you, Ike. Oh, she's flying at the sky. So immediately in South Park, Ike was being absolutely adorable and used as a major plot device for Kyle's journeys. And this was mostly how they continued to use him for the show for a very long time. Though occasionally utilizing him for silly ending beats like in Mecha Streisand. Look! But the next time they really give Ike focus was season two's episode Ike's Wee Wee, which uses Ike in a super similar way as the pilot. The episode has them celebrating Ike's bris, but when Kyle realizes what a bris actually is, he tries to save Ike from the procedure by putting him on a train that takes him far from South Park. But what works most about this episode is that this is when Kyle learns that Ike is adopted, which initially just makes him angry that he ever cared about Ike since they aren't blood related. It really does make Kyle look like an asshole. No way, there's no real connection between us. But man, these beats where Ike tries to win Kyle back over hit hard. Some of the sweetest, most heartfelt in the series. <laughs> Eventually, Kyle realizes his mistake and continues to try and protect Ike from the Briss. In Jubilee, we actually start to see hints of how smart and talented Ike actually is. He really doesn't want to be in the Squirts group at Juice Scouts, and so he makes this gorgeous rendition of The Last Supper out of macaroni, seemingly trying to get kicked out of the class. You don't make a macaroni picture of The Last Supper at a Jewish camp? Kyle and Ike's dynamic continued into the South Park movie. Kyle is still kicking the baby, but also Ike is hanging around with the boys and even sees the Terrence and Philip movie with them, picking up some awful language along the way. But once Kyle's mom starts the full-on war with Canada, they start putting Canadians in concentration camps, and so Kyle has to hide his own brother in their attic. This harmonica gag is funny, but also more hints that he's got a lot of hidden talents. This movie really makes Sheila look awful. Kyle's pleading at the end of the movie really should have knocked some sense into her. Did you forget that your own adopted son is Canadian? The show would continue to give us cute Ike moments in the early seasons. These songs are particularly funny, like when he's trying out for the gang's boy band. <laughs> Or when he's saying Yankee Doodle Boy for the talent show, which is funny since he's Canadian. I am the Yankee Doodle, I am the Yankee Doodle Boy. But like I said, Ike and Kyle's dynamic continued throughout South Park. So many episodes revolve around Kyle's relationship with Ike. Even in episodes that have little to do with him, like Cartoon Wars, Kyle is motivated by his love for his brother, this time having a dream where he's killed in a terrorist attack. This is a strong through line in the show that they were really smart to maintain. However, as the show has evolved, so has Ike. And though his relationship with Kyle has held strong, Ike himself has developed into someone with a lot more depth. One of the first episodes that started to hint that there's more going on with Ike was Trapper Keeper. I had seen this episode many times, but this was the first time it really registered with me that Ike was only supposed to be three years old in this one. But isn't he only three years old? Yeah, but he's some kind of genius, so he's getting advanced placement in kindergarten. I pooped my pants. This was still when the show was mostly using nonsensical dialogue for Ike that didn't really have any real correlation to the conversations at hand, which makes the episode's story very funny, as he gets nominated for class president against Fillmore, giving a rousing speech for his candidacy. Cook monsters ice. Well, this is gonna be a tough one, kids. Though this episode does mostly make a joke out of Ike's incoherence, it does establish that Ike is seen as having some level of above average intelligence, which is definitely confirmed moving forward. Though the next episode that really focuses on him is pretty rough. At a certain point, Ike starts having a secret affair with his kindergarten teacher, Miss Stevenson. I do admire you. You are so smart and gifted. So mature for your age. 
I don't like medicine. But after Kyle catches them in the act and tries to do the right thing and remove him from the situation, Ike doesn't want to go. This is another great Kyle trying to protect his brother episode because he has to do what's best for Ike, even though Ike doesn't want it. And Ike is so mad at Kyle when he tries to tell his parents about what's happening. Ike's angry face here is so, so funny. Ike and Miss Stevenson are having- Spider-Man! Yes, Ike, you like Spider-Man, don't you? And though they are obviously still using mostly nonsensical dialogue for Ike, this definitely shows that he does have a higher degree of comprehension about what's going on than you might expect, as he continues to interrupt Kyle so he doesn't squeal, and even argues with him later. No, Ike, I'm supposed to be looking out for what? This episode is a whirlwind. Miss Stevenson nearly kidnaps Ike by attempting to flee the country. I think we should go to Milan, like we always talked about. Yay, Milan! They're eventually caught by the police with no escape, and luckily at the last second, Ike comes to his senses, running back to Kyle instead of off of the building with Miss Stevenson. And though this is an episode about a child being taken advantage of, it does really start to show how cognizant of some of these situations that Ike really is, and this next major episode about last night would further confirm this. After Obama wins the 2008 election, Ike appears to be devastated. He was a McCain supporter. <laughs> It's okay, Ike. Obama will do fine. He ends up jumping out of a window as the town devolves into post-election chaos. Kyle and Stan spend the entire night trying to get him to the hospital, all while Obama and McCain secretly undergo their White House heist, the entire reason they ran for office in the first place. After Ike gets to the hospital, it's revealed that the entire time he was part of that heist, making sure that all involved are marked as deceased in their medical records. Boom, baby. Smart kid, probably the smartest thing we'd ever seen him do up to that point, but not the last smart thing. In Fatbeard, Ike would flee the country to become a pirate with Cartman and some other students. This is partially Kyle's fault, who egged Cartman on with his pirate idea. And while the idea of becoming a real-life pirate for fun might be childish, Ike's goodbye letter shows once again that there's a lot more going on inside his head. Dear Mommy and Daddy, I am running away. I am sorry but I can no longer handle the monotony of middle-class life. But eventually, Ike learns that people don't just turn to piracy for fun. They do it because they don't feel they have another choice, and that it's a dangerous life that nobody should want. Oh my god. Jeez. Guess we kind of got put in our place, Ike. I feel like an asshole. It's just another great example of Ike having the ability to really understand the severity of a situation despite his very young age. But Ike has to deal with some genuine horrors as well. He's walked in on his parents having sex like three separate times, one of which Gerald was dressed up as the UPS man, so Ike actually thought his mom was having an affair. Uh, Ike, this is a big deal. You have to be absolutely 100%. I saw them, guys! Plus, we know he's actually taken LSD, which is definitely not great for a developing brain. Maybe I'll take just half a hit of acid. I want free! He also got hooked on vapes, along with all the other kindergartners. Ike, do you have a vaping pen? Nope. But one of the roughest times in Ike's life was definitely when he got sixth sensed and started seeing dead celebrities everywhere, something his parents refused to believe was even happening to him. This is another great Kyle protecting Ike episode, and you can really see how much Ike trusts Kyle here. Make him stop! Make him stop, Kyle! This has got to be one of, if not the most traumatizing episode for Ike. He has to see a psychiatrist to reveal his dead celebrity secret, then some awful ghost hunters come to help and end up pissing all over the floor, and then his ghost visions end up sending him into a coma, trapping him in purgatory with the celebrities who are all still waiting to cross over to the other side. They're all stuck because Michael Jackson refuses to pass on, and he ends up inhabiting Ike's body. Wee, I'm a child. I knew I was a child, see? Come on, let's play! This is another example of Kyle going to great lengths to help his brother. In order to help MJ pass on and get Ike back, they help him win a child beauty pageant. MJ is freed and Ike returns to his body. Holy s***! What the f*** am I wearing? Ike's life hasn't necessarily been easy. He's gone through a handful of wildly traumatic events and his home life hasn't exactly been stable. And because of this, Ike did develop some pretty negative tendencies at certain points. Pussy. In season 18, Ike, along with all the other kids his age, start to get hooked on watching YouTube streamers like PewDiePie. Where Kyle previously had gotten to spend real bonding time with Ike playing games like Call of Duty, now Ike would rather watch internet creators play instead of play it himself. You wanna go downstairs and play? Meh. 
This episode has more to do with Kyle coming to terms with the fact that younger generations are going to like new and different things than he does, even if he doesn't understand them. But we also see Ike starting to spend a lot more time on the internet and on his computer, which leads pretty firmly into his major arc in season 20. Gerald starts anonymously trolling people in South Park under the username Skankunt42, and it sends the entire town into chaos. But when Sheila wants Gerald to talk to Ike about internet trolling because of what's been going on, he sort of just ends up bragging about it. He's now putting penises in people's mouths all over the internet and he's actually getting pretty famous. Gerald continues to brag to Ike about his internet exploits and eventually, under the pressure of potentially being caught, Gerald starts lashing out at Ike as well. Do you know who I am, Ike? No, but I want to, Dad. Not like that, smartass! And not only does he lash out at Ike, but Kyle too, which obviously makes an impression on Ike. Stop being such a pussy, okay, pal? F***. Daddy called you a pussy. And even worse, eventually Gerald makes Ike troll for him to get himself out of trouble, forcing him to say some heinous stuff. And when Sheila hears this, she assumes Ike has been the one trolling the entire time, and Gerald then makes him take the blame. You have to say, I'm sorry, Dad, I guess I'm just fucked up inside. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm just fucked up inside. Eventually, Kyle and Ike have to try and troll the president out of bombing Denmark so they can save their dad, despite everything he's done. And we can really see how much Gerald is impressed on Ike here. You're a little dipshit, president. With a dirty asshole. With a dirty asshole. And you set out your dick. This is such a unique situation because Kyle and Ike know that Gerald is the troll, but they can't tell their mom, so they basically have to simultaneously take the blame and defy her. But I love this moment when Kyle saves Ike from Sheila's wrath. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm just trying to protect my family. Somehow, Gerald is led entirely off the hook for this, and it's hard to imagine that Ike or Kyle's relationship with him will ever quite be the same. There's actually one other instance where Ike was sort of a huge dick, but it actually wasn't quite his fault, but this seems like the right place to talk about it. In the episode Taming Strange, Ike starts going through puberty, and it completely changes just about everything about him. Get out of my room, Kyle! I'm on my computer! Ike basically acts like a brooding teenager the entire time, shifting between the childish things he loves and wanting to tame some strange. Who would you rather f***? Boofa or Tootie? What? This is another episode where Ike does some pretty horrendous stuff, and he's particularly mean to Kyle. But honestly, you can still kind of see the Ike we know and love below the surface. Get out of my room, Kyle! I'm playing trucks! <laughs> Luckily, they learn that the only reason that Ike is acting this way is because he accidentally was taking Tom Brady's hormones instead of his own daily laxative, a mistake caused by the Canadian government using the IntelliLink system. After he stops taking the hormones, Ike goes back to normal. It's Dark Explorer! Well, mostly back to normal. I bet he's got that hot Puerto Rican strange. Like most characters in South Park, Ike has had his ups and downs. Though, there is one very important aspect of Ike we haven't talked about yet. Obviously, early on in the show, it's established that Ike is a native Canadian adopted by the Bruflovskis, but it isn't until later that they really start to put an emphasis on Ike's Canadian heritage through Ike himself. This really started in the season 7 episode, It's Christmas in Canada, when Ike's birth parents returned to take him back to Canada, made possible because of a new law passed by the Canadian Prime Minister. Ike doesn't want to leave, but they coerce him. No, 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 no! I have some chocolate. Chocolate! This is another of the best episodes that shows the lengths Kyle would go for his brother. He and the boys travel all across Canada to try and get Ike back, eventually discovering that the new Canadian Prime Minister is actually Saddam Hussein. Once he's ousted, the laws are nullified, and Ike is allowed to return home. Would you like to go back to your home in Colorado? Though this episode establishes that Ike loves his family and his life in America, this was the first time Ike ever spent in Canada, and after this, he would be shown to have strong, genuine Canadian pride throughout the series. The episode Royal Pudding is one of the best examples of Ike's Canadian pride. Ike doesn't show up to school because he's caught up watching the Canadian royal wedding, but during the ceremony, the Canadian princess is kidnapped. After this happens, Ike is basically inconsolable. He's totally unable to perform his role in the school play, much to Mr. Mackey's dismay, but eventually he's instructed by the Canadian Prime Minister to open his Box of Faith, something that all Canadians have, and follow its instructions. It's basically a call to arms, to go to Canada and help rescue the royal family member in peril. Of course, Ike's Canadian pride leads him forward. Where are you going? I got to get to Canada and, and join the armies and save the princess. God, Ike is just the best, isn't he? Ike travels all around Canada, teaming up with Ugly Bob, Patuktuk, and Scott, who is a dick. Stop being a dick, Scott! 
Eventually, the quartet discovers the princess has been captured by the evil Tooth Decay, and Ike bravely removes Ugly Bob's paper bag, turning Tooth Decay to stone and saving the princess. Ike and his compatriots are literally knighted by the royal princess. The princess now knighting Sir Ike Froflaski giving him three kisses and a pair of socks, as is tradition. Ike's royal loyalty runs strong. We even see later how devastated he is at the loss of the Canadian queen. She's dead, Kyle. Ike, the queen died like four months ago. But we also see that Ike's Canadian pride doesn't just stem from the royal family. Ike fiercely defends his country after it's heinously attacked as well. After Kyle starts to feel bad for the people being farted on by Terrence and Phillips' new Netflix series, he starts a group called Millennials Against Canada to try and put an end to it. A very Sheila-esque move, huh? This leads Canada's Prime Minister of Streaming to meet with President Garrison and complain about the Millennials, which leads Garrison to preemptively nuke Toronto. This is obviously a double affront for Ike who not only has to learn about the bombing of Toronto, but that his own brother is partially responsible for it. You know, those shows can be really harmful. Oh, stop being a victim. Jesus Christ. After this nuclear bombing, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau calls on Canadians to bring Garrison to justice, and Ike heeds the call. Don's full Mountie gear rides in Newfoundland and heads into the forest to find the president, possibly the most Canadian thing he's ever done. Ike captures Garrison in a trap and drags him back into town. <laughs> Though Garrison escapes, it's clear not only how far Ike is willing to go to defend his native country, but how capable he is in doing so. And that's one of my favorite things about Ike. Though on the outside, he just seems like the most adorable little kid in South Park, in reality, he's got so much more going on. He's far smarter than most kids his age, going into kindergarten two years early. He helped perform a masterful heist with two presidential candidates. He's dabbled in hard drugs and taken a part in very successful piracy. He was haunted and traumatized by the souls of countless dead celebrities. He's shockingly talented at internet trolling. And of course, he loves his country so much that he successfully aided in avenging national tragedies on two different occasions, even being knighted by the princess herself. Ike isn't just the most adorable kid in South Park, he's one of the most accomplished as well. And that Johnny is why we like Ike. I stay mellow watching Johnny two cellos. He talks cartoons, he's a really cool fellow. He keeps you posted on adult cartoons. If that's what you're into, then grab a spoon and a very big bowl of your favorite cereal. Feels like Saturday morning cartoon material. Johnny Two Chells, watch him on YouTube. Now enjoy this groove and bust a move.